true the automotive industry is being run by a bunch of dummies? We'll find out this week on Motoring 2001. TSN's Motoring 2001 is brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oils, formulated for the vehicles you drive and the way you drive them. And Midas, keep a good thing going. Go Midas! You know, we consider ourselves very lucky here on Motoring to be able to attend most of the new car launches each year and also get to drive the vehicles for the first time. But you know, no matter how different the vehicles are, there's always one common focus at each launch, and that is safety. Stronger platforms and materials, front and side airbags, and so on. As one automotive executive once told me, safety, not design or performance, is the number one selling feature in today's market. And with that in mind, and with the safety regulations getting even tighter, manufacturers today are spending millions of dollars on testing, hoping to be number one when it comes to safety. And as we're about to see, not just any dummy can perform a crash test. The dummies that we are using mainly in our crash testing now are called the hybrid threes. Um, they have lots of advancements in the behavior of the neck and of the thorax and of the, the lower spine, the lumbar spine. Um, again, lots of developments in those areas and the non-instrumented dummy itself is about $33,000 by the time we add all the instrumentation, the accelerometers, the load cells in the neck and the spine, um, it'll be about $100,000. I've been dealing with dummies for more than 25 years, and I've seen them develop from very simple, basic models that uh, you could measure only 11 data channels to the current hybrid three dummy, which you can measure more than 75 data channels and extract uh, so much valuable data from simply one crash. They, they come in all sizes and shapes, as you know, and uh, I look at myself and I look at the old Hybrid 2 dummy and I can see a tremendous resemblance. We both weigh about 170 pounds and we're both 5 foot 9 inches tall. Our arms are exactly the same length. And if we were to put a head side by side with mine, you'd see that they are truly ballasted in proportion to represent the 50th percentile adult male. They do a great deal of calibrating of these dummy occupants. Each component is calibrated before and after each crash test so that from head to toe, the entire occupant has been calibrated to assure the performance and any component that does not fall within a certain specification is discarded, removed, and replaced. Back in the good old days, uh, which would be the late 60s, early 70s, our smallest dummy was a six-month-old. It was a rag doll that essentially looked like a rag doll, but it was ballasted with sand, and it uh, served the purpose for uh, child seat, infant seat development. But by today's standards, we have a very sophisticated six-month-old infant dummy. And um, you could just see the tremendous technological advancement in, in something as simple as the six-month-old rag doll compared to today's six-month-old anthropomorphic test device. That's tough to say. Probably the toughest part of the job of, of designing a crash dummy is how do you know what a human would, would behave like in something like a, a crash test. Um, obviously we cannot put real humans in there and, and get that data. So the data has come from a variety of sources. Uh, there have been many experiments on, on animals. There have been uh, anesthetized uh, pigs and monkeys that have been tested. Uh, the pig's chest is very similar to that of a human, so a lot of research has been done on that. Uh, there also has been a lot of testing done on cadavers. Um, most of the data I have seen from cadaver testing has been done in Europe. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've seen any data from 
testing done in the United States on cadavers. Uh, but I, I, can, I can tell you some people that would gladly accept your body if you'd be willing to donate it to them for, for research. So we're called the Chicago Speakeasy. We're driving uh, a Cadillac. We've had it for about 15 minutes. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. More later on Kenzie's Corner. You know, it was 17 years and 8 million units ago that Chrysler introduced the minivan formula. On this edition of Test Drive, we take a look at the latest generation. The question is, have they managed to raise the bar yet again? Perhaps the most impressive part of the new town and country is its gathered feel on the road. The new structure is stiffer than the previous model and the suspension firm enough to respond confidently to the commands from the steering. In the past, the handling was on par with any other minivan. For 2001, things improved. During the pylon run, the town stayed out of the country, tacking a surprisingly good line. Body roll is an issue, and understeer does pop its head in as you near the fairly early limit. But for a seven-seat van, this one is more than accomplished. Talk the town and country version of Chrysler's new van and you talk about one loaded vehicle. This thing comes with power, heated seats, nice suede inserts, decent looking fake wood and all the comfort and convenience items you can shake a stick at, up to and including a very nice set of parchment coloured gauges. And for the most part, the layout of all of the major controls is logical. There is, however, one exception. Beneath the buttons, beneath the radio, well, there is where you'll find the climate control. Now, these things are placed, because they're so low down, right at the extremity of your reach, which mandates taking your eyes off the road to adjust them. Now, thankfully, this thing is of the automatic set-and-forget variety, which eliminates that. Without that feature, well, good luck. Good road manners do not come at the expense of ride quality. True, you do know you've hit a bump, but the feedback is not overly intrusive. Serenity also comes in the form of a quiet ride. Unlike many minivans, where the enormous open areas amplify the slightest sound, the Chrysler is well insulated and isolated, even if you are relegated to the third row of seats. You know, Chrysler really did have their thinking caps on with this new minivan, and part of it is right here with this movable center console. It can fit between the front seats or the center seats. In the back half, spot for tissues, a trinket tray, and of course a large box. In the front half is where it gets very clever. There's a power outlet and a very handy spot for your cell phone. The beauty is you can order a second one of these from the dealer, and they're a snap, quite literally, to install. You simply drop it into place, push down, Bob's your uncle. Town & Country Limited is powered by Chrysler's 3.8 litre V6, a motor good for 215 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, and that's about 35 more horses than last year. Torque is also up slightly to 245 pounds-feet at 4,000 RPM. The net result places the performance at the high end of the minivan scale. The step off the line is prompt and merging with highway traffic is a breeze. The only transmission offered is a four-speed automatic that works through the town's optional all-wheel drive system. Now the hookup with the road with this system is much better than it was with the basic front driver as much of the usual wheel spin disappears. As with the handling, the powertrain proved to be a pleasant surprise. You know, my kids had an absolute ball with this vehicle during the test because upon the right command, open sesame, the tailgate actually opens all by itself. Now, whilst there is an obstacle detector which reverses the direction, it requires enough force that it could actually take the paint off a car park too close. Having said all of that, once you've taken the right precautions and you open this thing up and get over those damn beeps, it's the model of versatility inside. You can remove all of the seats, some of the seats, or none of the seats. It's all been designed very, very well. 
Improved brakes bring a much better pedal feel and now haul this weighty van to a halt in just 112 feet from 80k. The improved pedal feel also makes it easier to keep the anti-lock at bay until it's absolutely needed. Other noteworthy improvements are bigger and better headlights and a larger sweep for the wipers, both of which help visibility. On the safety front there are dual stage airbags as well as the town's standard side seat mounted airbags. You know, when you look at this new Chrysler minivan, there's no question that the changes are evolutionary and not revolutionary, but that doesn't mean they haven't managed to raise the bar. They have. When you look at the town and country specifically at $50,000, it's anything but cheap. However, factor in the comfort and convenience, versatility, and that all-wheel drive system, now you've got a great alternative to a sports utility vehicle. When viewed in that light, it's certainly not out of its price range. Sometimes you never quite know what you're going to find on a test drive. Take the new Lexus SC430 for example, an aluminum hardtop convertible with the same rear drive format V8 as the new LS430. The roof itself folds down into the trunk and while there are four seats, this is nothing more than a two-seater with a spot for your briefcase. It is also elegantly attired and swoopy to the eye. Watch for a full test on a future test drive. Our Midas tip of the week concerns getting a real close look at what's going on inside your car. You might have noticed in the last year or two I've been wearing glasses around the shop for seeing detail, but I'll tell you, you can't beat a cheap item like a magnifying glass like this for seeing real close detail. Let me give you an example of a couple of things where we use it around the shop. Here's a perfect example. This alternator is used on a lot of GM late model cars and trucks. Right over here where I've cleaned it up a little bit is a part number that's important for reordering this alternator or obtaining a rebuilt unit. It also tells you the amperage. Now this particular alternator could be used on a lot of different GM cars and trucks. Here's another example. Right over here there's a number stamped in this pulley. It's kind of hard to read and it's very important because a number of different pulleys could be on any one given alternator. If I look at it through the magnifying glass I can see clearly that it's a 964. You have to make sure that you get exactly the right pulley for your belts and tensioners to work properly. Here's another perfect example. When you're looking to use spark plug, you're quite often looking for how much wear is on it. But if you want to really see what's going on inside that engine, the spark plug reveals a whole lot more than just the wear and tear on the plug itself. Using the magnifying glass can give you a real close look at what's going on inside that engine. That's your Midas tip of the week. Good morning. It is nice to be here in Toronto. We are here to help the children of the world. And you have to see the crazy cars, but I am looking for the blood bank because we need breakfast. But why don't you follow me and see some of the crazy cars and see our Transylvania Express. Actually, we're here for the Variety Club Bash. We're gonna raise money for a lot of children. There's 40 cars from all over the world, from Australia, New Zealand, Iowa, California, Chicago, New York, uh, Florida. It's, they're people that care about kids all over the world. Variety Club is the largest charity in the world devoted to children. And it's a way of having fun and raising money. How we raise money is we all get sponsors for our cars, just like NASCAR and that money goes to the children. It actually it goes to the tents. The cars that are from Toronto, the money that they raise stays in Toronto where I live in Des Moines, Iowa. The money that I raise and, and the other people from Iowa stays in Iowa. But we'll raise pr approximately a half a million dollars on this five days in uh, Canada and the United States. I have a uh, 68 Cadillac hearse called the Transylvania Express and it's a uh, it's a, it's a fun thing. It's all done in red velvet on the inside. This is a Ford chassis and has a, a Ford drive system. The body's been stretched. The chassis's been stretched. Set the whole body on it. As you can see, the, uh, the uh, hood uh, is a casket and uh, uh, just a lot of fun, fun building it. Annette and her, uh, her uh, boyfriend built the car in Australia and shipped it over in a container. It arrived about a week ago and we drove it up from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
How far are we going? About a thousand miles on the badge. We're here from Chicago. There's six of us. We're called the Chicago Speakeasy. We're driving uh, a Cadillac. I think it's a 1978. And how long have you had this car? We've had it for about 15 minutes. Lots of weird people here. Lots of weird people. A couple of uh, Draculas, some pirates over there from New Zealand. They're trouble. Watch out for them. Having a good time. Yeah, we're having a great time. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, team? We're just looking for Beverly Hills. Jed's already found his way there. This is Grandma. Allie. And I'm Allie May. Actually, I'm actually Belly May today. You haven't seen nothing yet. Truck for Bedford. Uh, 38 model. Um, found it in a shed and the shed had fallen down on top of it. We just pulled the roof off and off of the shed roof off it. And this is about how we drove it out of the shed. We've done about 30, 40,000 miles in this truck, in, in these bashes over the years, yeah. What's the engine? Is it original engine? Or? Yeah, it's all original, yeah. It's all, even the rust. What makes you do it, yeah? I don't know. <laughs> we probably have a, look, a lot of fun, I suppose. Have a lot of fun and we and we raise a lot of money for kids. Good luck finding Beverly Hills. Thank you. <laughs> now, although we've been talking about safety this week, I doubt any of those vehicles would fit the bill. And speaking of bill, let's head to the garage and join Mr. Gardner. Well, Brad, one uh, safety item that uh, is very important to any vehicle you're driving, whether it's a light truck or car, whatever sport utility, is the available tread depth on your tires. Now, a passenger car tire like the one used on this Hyundai would have started out life at around 10 or 11 30 seconds tread depth, depending on the make and model of tire. You can see the minor sipes, these little cuts in the tread here. On the outside rib of this tire, the, the minor sipes have completely disappeared. All we've got is smooth rubber here. It's bald on the outside rib. Now, when we measure it in the first groove, we get a reading of 330 seconds, which is considered worn out. And up here, we can see the tread wear indicator is virtually flush across these two ribs. When I go to the middle rib of this tire, I get a reading of 530 seconds. And that's an indication that we've got either a little bit of misalignment or a bit of cornering wear. And it's normal on front tires to get a little bit of outside edge wear just from cornering forces or a combination of cornering and misalignment. But in any case, this tire at this tread depth with this kind of wear needs to be replaced. Now this vehicle has light truck tires on it, and light truck tires typically have more tread depth when they're new than a passenger car tire. This particular one started out life at 13, 30 seconds. Some start as much as 15 or 16, 30 seconds tread depth when they're new. Now this tire, even though it has quite a few miles on it, still measures 9, 30 seconds in the outside rib. And if I go to the middle rib here, it measures as much as 11, 30 seconds tread depth. That's more than an, than an adequate amount of tread depth to be driving this vehicle in the rain or even in the winter time. So when we look at a tire like this, it's more than serviceable condition. Now this light truck tire, just like the passenger car tire, would be considered worn out when it gets down to 330 seconds. You want to be aware of these things and adjust your driving accordingly. And when you get your vehicle serviced, this is one of the questions you should be asking of the people who service your car. How much tread depth have I got left? How are my tires? And then you can uh, adjust your maintenance accordingly. This vehicle, for example, needs a new set of tires right now. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2001. Now, you may have seen that episode on The Simpsons where Marge of the blue hair is driving around in that Canyon Arrow sport utility vehicle. You know, 12 feet high, two lanes wide, 36 tons of American pride. Now, Marge is the most soft-spoken, mild-mannered person in the world, the most un-Homer-like cartoon character you can imagine. And yet, within minutes behind the wheel of this great big truck, she's driving like an idiot, road rage personified, honking her horn, shaking her fist at people. Well, you know, I've been driving around in this puppy all week, and I can tell you, it happens. I mean, look at this thing. 4x4, four four, dually, uh, uh, crew cab, the big diesel motor. I mean, I was driving this thing like an idiot, taking out the, the drive throughs at the country style and running over curbs. And, of course, you had to stop every once in a while and pull the Hondas out of your wheel wells. I mean, they're just bugs on the windshield. Get out of my way. I own this road. Now, 
these things are addictive. Yeah, you start off with a little Ranger, you think you can control it. Next thing you know, you've moved up to a mid-sized Dakota. Pretty soon, your kids are going hungry, there's no shoes on their feet because you're saving money for a big truck like this. You know, there should be a 12-step program for people like this. You know, a phone number you can call. Hey, buddy, I'm going to buy a, a bigger truck. Come on, help talk me down. Now, I'm not talking about you guys that pull fifth-wheel trailers, you got horses or whatever, you need something like this, that's what they're for. But to drive to the office, man, you need help. Now, most people take drugs because they feel inadequate. Let me tell you, for 55,000 bucks, you can buy a lot of Viagra, you know what I'm saying? As for you women who like to drive trucks like this, I'm not sure what to say to you, except maybe you just like to feel dominant. In which case, there's a website you might want to check out, www.patriciamarsh.com, and don't ask me how I know. You know, this week we've been talking a lot about safety, mostly passive safety, that being airbags and building a stronger vehicle to protect the occupants. But personally, I believe in active safety, that being that the ultimate driving performance will induce safety. And with that in mind, as Jim Kenzie always says, the ultimate gift for your son or daughter would be to experience a driving course. It could result in years and years of driving pleasure for the kids and for mom and dad, fewer sleepless nights. That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. Harley is a very interesting brand. They, they, they're very strong and uh, protective about it. We had uh, talked about putting such things as dropping an SVT uh, engine in it, and they didn't feel that that was really the image that they wanted to project to the market. They uh, very, very demanding as to how you present this vehicle, very protective of it. An interesting experiment to uh, work with them. So that's uh, a pretty good uh, yardstick of what your tires are doing for you. It's maybe a wake-up call you should get them looked at. Good stuff as usual, Billy. Thanks. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday. Okay, Ted. That's Bill Gardner from TSN's Motoring 2001, CFRB Time. I'm one of those guys when when he has problems with his car, he pulls over to the side of the road, opens up the hood and looks at it, you know, as, as if I'm going to see something there that really tell me what it is I should be doing. I figure if there's nothing blowing up or burning, then it's someone else's job. With three years in a row now, you've gone down to the United States and beaten out the American program, which must make them crazy. TSN's Motoring 2001 has been brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oils, formulated for the vehicles you drive and the way you drive them. And Midas, keep a good thing going. Go Midas!